Okay, so um, first of all, uh, committee members, did everybody receive the draft minutes from our last meeting? Yes? Um, can I have a motion to approve? I have a correction. Oh, okay. In the section where you have updates from uh, committee members, in the section about mine and the fourth line, you're saying that we have, since we're open, we have stopped online orders and that's not correct. Okay, so we'll simply change that to say you continue to accept online orders. Thanks. Okay. Any other changes? Okay, can I have a motion to approve the minutes with Deborah's edit included? Motion. Deborah, can I have a second? Cato? Okay, all in favor? Raise your hand. Aye. Any against? Uh, Jane, you're, you're voting against? No, I'm voting oh, okay. against. Oh. Okay, great. All right, then the motion passes. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, let's see, we, oh, that's right. Um, we don't have Susan with us today. So um, talking about status of committee nominations, Beth, do you know when the townhouse is going to be open again so we can get Ramon sworn in? Um, no, they are working. Uh, they're working on a oh appointment. Um, I'm actually, um, I I think they're going to try to have some open spaces next week, um, but okay. they're going to release a schedule so they'll have uh, appointments. Okay, great. Um, well, Ramon, I'm very pleased that you were able to attend. Um, we'll get you voting as soon as we can. Um, and let's see, I see, I thought I saw Marsha trying to log in, but okay. Um, then I think we have um, another uh, committee member. I believe it's Jennifer from Joy Street, um, spoke with Susan and seemed open to joining. So. That's wonderful. Um, and we'll, um, with that, we'll be a complete committee, which will be nice. Um, so I'd like to keep us moving along here. Uh, next item on our agenda is talking about uh, updates from the town about reopening. Um, Beth, I hate to put you in the hot Jennifer, spot. Jennifer, yeah. I just saw there was a notice from uh, Marsha that she's having a hard time access getting in. Is she in? I saw her briefly and then not. Let me try sending her the link again. I know what she's talking about because what I, ha I had the exact same problem. I, uh, it says the meeting is June 19th, but then I closed it down and I reopened yep. it. All right. I did the same thing. I've tried and I saw her. She logged in. I admitted her and then she disappeared. So um, I've just sent her the link again. Maybe she can try again. Okay, um, Beth, do you want to kind of, there's been a lot happening in the last two weeks. You want to give us a little update of where we are from the town's perspective on reopening? Sure. I, um, I just sent Marsha a, a text. Oh, so. I see her in the waiting room. Hopefully this will work this time. Okay. There she is. There she is. She's connecting. And we're getting there. Okay, I think she's here. Okay. Hi, Marsha. Odie. <laughs> um, okay, so for the town, um, the visitor center is open to the public. Um, the bathrooms are open to the public at the visitor center, at Ride Out Park. Um, National Parks bathrooms are open. Um, I know Jane sent a notice out to everybody this week for her list. Um, national parks it's the comfort stations that are open um, so th that's at both national parks entrances and uh, so uh, the ones at the Northbridge and at the um, Lexington Road Visitor Center 
those have comfort stations that are open. Uh, Great Meadows is trails open, no public bathrooms yet. Walden Pond is open, public bathrooms at the swimming hole. The visitor center is closed, but the gift shop is open. Um, um, let's see. Um, Recreation Center, Hunt Recreation Center is um, camp only and camp starts on Monday. So recreation is spread out this year for day camps. Day camps are available for kids in incoming grades K to six. Um, camp pro programs start Monday and they'll be housed at the rec center, the um, Alcott School and the high school. Um, so we're keeping to the groups of 10 that's required with 10 kids, two counselors, same groups every week. Um, and as a parent, I'm really, really excited that they're running camp. <laughs> um, um, all the precautions are taken. Signage is up all over town for wearing mask the um, Emerson playground they're on the fence um, all the town buildings have signage reminding everybody for social distancing and masks um, every town building has a COVID plan that's on file and on top of that um, a APP was just confirmed by the select board which is um, permanent for the town which has our COVID plan that every single employee has to acknowledge receipt of um, so we're moving in the right direction um, I know town House isn't open to the public yet, but they're working on appointment only schedules. Um, I've not heard when that's going to happen yet. Um, um, but the Hunt Recreation Center has staff in it. My visitor center is fully staffed. Um, we're going to we're open seven days a week now. Um, and the other town offices um, staff are coming and going. So facilities staff is working. DPW Marsha's staff's been working in and out of the office, um, and townhouse staff as well. Um, in terms of of the dining, I think we have six restaurants now that have applied and been approved for outdoor dining. 80 Thoreau, Paparazzi, uh, Trails End, um, Main Street is under consideration because they're using a public way. Um, Colonial Inn is open for outdoor dining. Woods Hill applied and I think is approved. Uh, uh, there may be more. Um, Adelita's, yes. Um, and the 99, right? So the applications are coming in and being turned around and, and the 99, yes. Um, so applications have been coming in and turned around in less than 48 hours. Um, town manager has approval for the okay on them once they go through an electronic chain for fire department, health, DPW. Um, the restaurants are all offered barriers if they need them that the town paid for and has acquired. Um, so we're really on our way with online dining. Um, I know we talked a lot about the blocker. Sorry, Brent, Doug, can you just um, that slow down we'll hear a on bit. Friday. The sure. slow, slow down a little bit because you're breaking up in between a little. So just slow down. Go ahead. <laughs> ah, you got it. <laughs> um, the community block grant, we should hear on Friday uh, for that grant. And then Marsha, do you want to talk about the new one that we just applied for today? Well, I'm not done yet because <laughs> there's a separate form that I have to fill out <laughs> online with everything. But I've been working with a town engineering office to identify both uh, several on-street locations in the three village centers, as well as some uh, small parklets and some uh, larger open spaces that are grass that we might add some outdoor dining options so that anyone who can pick up food uh, can take it out and um, enjoy in in a fairly nice setting. We're, we're talking about adding some tables and and uh, shade sails, uh, umbrellas, some benches and so forth. And that grant, um, the estimate so far is $250,000. The, the grant Allowance is up to 300,000 and it's for short term um, projects that hopefully might become um, something that we will do long term, say every summer or something like that. That's great. And, and you'll, that application is due when and when do you expect to hear back from it? Well, they opened the application process. <laughs> they announced it last week. <laughs> and um, the applications, they were accepting them beginning on Monday. Uh, I, I just finished up with the estimate with the town engineer and submitted what we put together in a, a document. But they now want a, a, an online form. So I'm going to be 
after done, I'm done with this meeting, sit down and, and fill out that online form and make sure that the information is, is accurate there. And any idea um, how long the process is to receive a decision? They say 14 days. They, yes. Yeah. It's, it's a day from the time it's submitted. Yeah. So it's a real. That's great. Really quick turnaround. Um, they call it a, a quick return okay. application. So, um, and That's I was great. just on the phone with um, MMA, the Massachusetts Muni Municipal Association, and there are um, a few more grants that are going to come down the pipeline in July. Um, one is directly for rent and mortgage help, um, and it's a $20 million emergency fund, um, and that's supposed to come out in early July. And is that something that people will be able to apply directly to, or they'll need to go through the town? You no, know, you'll be able to apply direct. From what I can understand, you'll be able to apply directly through it, and as soon as we get notice that it's available, we'll send it out. And what's the other grant? You said you heard of two. No, the shared streets was one, and this other one, the um, the mortgage one. That's that's great. That's really encouraging. Um, so oh yeah, sorry. There is there is. I'm sorry. There is one more. Um, it's called um, the Small Business Stabilization Fund, and um, I, the the person that was talking about it was Senator Keneally from the governor's office and the website is empowering smallbusiness.org and it's small business grants. I don't know anything about the criteria. I just got off of that call right before this one. Okay, that's great. One more um, is a, a, it's a mass development grant. Up to $10,000 is, is doesn't require a match up to 25. Anything between 10 and 25 requires a match, but it would allow um, nonprofits and other groups to work together to um, do what the town is doing through its shared um, shared streets and spaces grant. And I volunteered to assist anyone who wants to put something together. Um, I think it came in yesterday and the town manager or Beth was going to submit it to the Concord Business Partnership, the Chamber, and I'll forward it to the two yep. cultural district committees. And Marsha, can you also send that yeah, information send to Concord together? I'll send um, it out. I've got it. I'm going to okay. do it tonight, so I'll send it out to everybody. Great. It's good to hear some helps on the way. That's great. Um, next item on the agenda, I don't know if we can speak to because I don't see Stephen here tonight. Um, Beth or Marsha, do you have any updates on, uh, or uh, Susan's not here either, to talk about if they have looked into Henry Dane's proposal and sort of what their thoughts were about that? Neither, neither, okay. I, I, yeah, I haven't heard back. Okay, we'll, we'll push that out to the next meeting then because we need the right people here to talk about that, so. Okay, all right, so, um, Sorry to make this the, like, um, blah, blah, blah. again, I, I'm going to have to put on my Concord Together hat for a minute uh, as we, were there any other things from your group, Beth, before we move on? Oh, um, does, um, if everybody knows that the town got a donation of masks and they're being stored at the visitor center for any business that needs them. I think, I know James sent that email out to everybody, but just so this group knows, um, I've got, I don't know, a thousand of them. So anybody that needs them for their business can come and get them. Wonderful. Beth, before we just move on to this, Jennifer, are, are people going to the visitor center and are they taking the masks? Are they asking or requesting some use of some of the masks? I know they're different parties. Um, I got just going to the visitor center, and then our our businesses requesting oh. masks. Um, I've got on one so far, <laughs> but I only opened on Monday, so that requested them. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to share my screen here for a second. Um, Moving on to the next item here. Can you guys see the Concord Together business survey? 
screen. Yeah. Thank you. Are you guys able to see that? Yep. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I can't see what you're seeing, so I just wanted to make sure. So you probably remember that we did a survey a couple of months ago as COVID was really hitting. Um, we did this survey as a follow-up, and I think we're going to continue to do something similar every few weeks just to help us keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on. So um, this just shows you, we, this time around, we had 55 businesses responding, um, a really wide range of industries. Uh, and, and this was sent out uh, with the agenda and I'm happy to email this to anybody and it will also be part of the minutes for next time. Um, so this was an important question. Uh, again, just um, trying to help the public-private partnership uh, you recall the HUD grant that Beth's group applied for um, was really relevant only to micro businesses with five or fewer employees. So we were trying to get a feel for how important that would be. And the good news is with a respondent uh, pool of only 55 businesses, 35 of them do seem to at least meet the employee criteria for that potential grant. So we're hopeful that that means that we'll be able to support a wider range of businesses once that hopefully gets approved. Um, this was interesting to look at more from the Concord Together perspective, trying to see how important it will be to support efforts to transition into e-commerce or to enhance e-commerce capabilities. And um, we can see that um, on online sales, including online sales for curbside pickup, um, you know, they're starting to pick up a little bit, um, you know, less than 10% of respondents, uh, I'm sorry, 60% of the respondents said it was still less than 10% of their business. Um, but we did see um, some folks starting to increase their online sales. What was really interesting is to see that 43% um, of our respondents didn't have any e-commerce capability pre-COVID, so they are starting to dip their tail, their toe into it and grow their capabilities. And it will be important um, for both the public and the private sectors to encourage and support that uh, to help the businesses grow. This slide has me concerned. Um, we know that we've already lost at least four businesses in town be during the COVID crisis. Um, this survey showed that eight businesses or 14 and a half percent of those who responded said they are very close to having to close their business. An additional 63% or 35 businesses have said they're okay for now, but they're worried about the future. So I just think it's really important that we keep this slide in mind. Uh, when we talk about timing of things, we need to move uh, as quickly as we can on, on initiatives to support. So I'm really encouraged to hear new grant opportunities coming in, et cetera. Um, we were asking people what their most urgent needs are right now. Uh, rent and utilities, you've got a lot of businesses that are really drowning in multiple months of debt now. Um, it was interesting to see that right behind that though is a real call for help in getting the word out that people are open now. Um, and that is marketing communications, everything from uh, flyers to Facebook ads, to print ads, to banners, et cetera. Um, and so this was very helpful for the Concord Together folks um, to look at you know, where, where we should focus efforts around grants. Um, and then again, if we ask people um, if they had a small grant right now, what would they use it for? We do see overwhelmingly that rent and utilities is a problem, um, but that there are still several other needs, um, marketing communications, but also there's still some renovations and reorienting that needs to happen inside the stores to comply with COVID guidelines um, and a variety of other things. Um, so the town had asked us to include a question around how would people feel if we closed stores to uh, car traffic and made them pedestrian only, or if we were to limit some of the parking spaces to accommodate outdoor dining? And uh, it was very interesting to see 
that these are businesses saying that yes, in the name of solidarity, I'm happy to see um, pedestrian only areas uh, or parking spaces in front of restaurants closed to help if they need it. So these um, survey results are interesting. We'll continue to kind of poll the group as we go along. Um, and again, I'm happy to make these available to anybody that needs them. Um, a couple of things have come out of this. First of all, um, some of you may have already heard about this, but um, just this week, Concord Together has launched a summer solstice event. It's very simple and straightforward. The idea is to encourage local people and visitors to get out and shop and eat with local businesses as much as they can. It's a very simple concept. Anytime you shop in a Concord business or eat in a Concord restaurant, you would show them this passport that you can print. You can do, we, we're making announcements all over the place. You can download it off the ConcordTogether.com website. You can either get a stamp or just an initial from the shopkeeper or the restaurateur. And once you've completed 10 squares, you'll send this into the visitor center. You can either drop it off in person or email it to Beth's team. And we will do a drawing every week starting July 1st. Um, the businesses have been extremely generous in donating gift cards um, and we will be drawing weekly. And then we'll have a grand prize drawing on August 20th that'll be like a bountiful bouquet of fabulous gift cards. Um, there will be a lot of social media around any business that gave a gift card. We'll each individually get a thank you and a little shout out on social media. We'll be posting the winners on social media every week um, with a concerted marketing and communications effort from the town. Concord together and all the businesses that are part of that effort. Um, so this, the idea is to just keep keep the dialogue going all summer long. Um, you'll see, I believe, uh, Beth, is it tomorrow that we're hanging the banners or Thursday? Hopefully, they got the they as far as I know. Yeah, they got them today. They're delivered, so they're going to. I put a request in for them to get home. That's yep. great. So there'll be a big banner in West Concord and another banner in Concord Center announcing this, and then next week you should see something in the newspaper. So um, hopefully all those things are going to start to attract some foot traffic, et cetera. Um, and then the other thing, the other big news is um, Concord Together has partnered with the Concord Carlisle Community Chest. And um, I don't see Jennifer here today um, unfortunately, but, um, we have just opened that fund so businesses can now apply for help. Um, it's a rolling fund. We're very excited that two citizens stepped forward. We now have a $115,000 grant match open. Um, we've already raised over $25,000, uh, in funds. And with that match in place, we went ahead and opened the grant application to businesses starting today. Um, and it'll be done on a rolling basis. The idea is to help as many businesses as possible, as quickly as possible. And it's sort of a joint effort. A lot of it depends on folks that want to donate. It's tax deductible donation to the community chest. Um, and that is all now rolling and in motion. So. Those are the major initiatives coming out of Concord Together. Um, before we move on to the other items, does anyone have any questions about those items? No? Okay, great. So um, along with attracting foot traffic and kind of optimizing outdoor dining opportunities, Marsha and Beth, I'm very excited to hear about the grant application that could potentially help with some additional outdoor dining or picnicking space. Um, we have a, a public guest with us here today from the Umbrella Arts Center. Um, Jerry, can I put you on the spot for a second and ask you to talk a little bit about the idea that you, we were hashing over? Sure. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Jennifer. Sure. It's great to see everybody. I know most of you. Um, 
so there were two ideas. I'm not sure which one you want to talk about first, but um, I can be here representing the umbrella and I can be here representing the Concord Center Cultural District Committee. Um, and that I think is what I first uh, reached out to Jennifer about because um, we are we have had to cancel all the plans that we had made over the, the um, last year to develop some programming for the cultural district. And, and in our last meeting, I think it was last week, we talked about uh, this idea of Concord coming outside for dining and whether it was closing off Walden Street or uh, whatever, that maybe the cultural district could add a cultural component to that initiative. So maybe there could be a stage, maybe there could be a band and music playing, maybe we could show a movie, maybe you know, we could have a comic. We, we didn't really get that far. But just the idea of if, if the town gets to the point that they're saying, let's close off a street one night a week, then maybe you can work with us and we can help develop some sort of cultural programming to that. That was the first idea. And have you talked about the picnic table idea I've, um, I'm inviting you to present okay. that idea. So this was not our idea, but but we're welcome to join in and this would be um, likely through the umbrella. Um, Jen had mentioned that maybe Concord Together had talked about developing little dining spots, outdoor dining spots around town. And maybe there would be something consistent about the dining spots in that they were all the same picnic table or something, but maybe painted by the community. And we've talked that maybe we could use the umbrella as a site where we could have some sort of community event, socially distanced, where families could come, assemble a picnic table, and then paint it. Um, so um, kind of like the Chicago cows, if you know that, but uh, Concord's version of that. Um, we don't have a lot of staff at the umbrella right now. We're not open like a lot of places are because most of the things we do are large gatherings. Um, and we're probably not gonna come back to that for quite a while. Um, so we're not in a pattern of coming into the office a lot. And um, if it's an initiative that you guys are interested in and want us to look further into, um, I talked briefly to the staff about it. I got some positive reactions. So um, I just wanna make sure that we've got people that can help administer that. And I think the, uh, the action item here is potentially to ask the town, the select board to consider if they could pay for the supplies to create these picnic tables and the paint and what have you, um, then the umbrella could, you know, potentially facilitate um, creating what would be a really positive community building effort uh, and a really uplifting activity that could result in some, you know, some nice outdoor spaces. So if we're, if the town's already pursuing a grant that could potentially facilitate something like that, maybe we could consider joining forces and, and kind of making that a fun family oriented um, art, art activity for the community. So I'm, I'm not sure that we need a, a recommendation at this stage. Maybe we wait and see where we are with um, the grants that uh, Marsha and Beth are pursuing right now. Um, but we just wanted to put it out there and maybe we could at least talk with Stephen about it. Um, it. It's not a terribly expensive activity to do uh, and it might help open additional outdoor space in West Concord, Concord, Thoreau Street, et cetera, um, that could encourage continued takeaway um, in addition to outdoor dining. Um, That's, I love that idea. Um, and the part of the grant that talks about that does have what Marsha indicated, you know, one of the things we'd be needing is tables and chairs and tents and things like that. So um, it's possible that we could use it for artistically designed uh, tables. I love it. Um, great. And then another sort of call for help that um, came through several channels that I would like the committee to actively discuss and potentially vote on asking for help with is as the businesses are opening up, they're really having a hard time letting people know that they are open. Um, especially in Concord Center, we have some historic district restrictions against um, flags or banners or things like that. Um, and I'd like this committee to discuss how we feel about 
potentially asking for those restrictions to be temporarily waived so that the businesses can get the word out that they are open. I am. Um, I, can you hear me better? Or a little you, bit? Yeah, we can hear um, you. Go ahead. I, I have to leave, as I told you, in like five minutes, but I 100% agree with that. I think that's really important um, because it is a way for people to see. I mean, there's, you know, there's signage on Colonial Inn, there's signage on Helen, you know, you look around town and there is signage already. I think it's really important for people to be able to see that. It's, it was unfortunate because we're doing a new website, so we wanted to get some pictures of downtown. And you know, there's a lot of signage right now, so it's different. But um, but I think it's a great a great way for businesses to get, especially restaurants and and smaller retailers, to get that out, um, so people know that they're open. Jennifer, I think a, a letter from uh, that came from the Economic Vitality Committee, as well as from the other. Um, groups such as Concord Together and Concord Business Partnership in the Chamber uh, to the Historic Districts Commission to say, you know, to ask that uh, for the time being that there not be um, violations cited or whatever, I, I, because these are temporary. Uh, yeah. and, and the hope is that through this kind of advertising, our businesses will recover. And I think that they will understand, especially if it's put in the form of a request to support local business. Can so, I ask, do you think we need to actually formally vote on this as something we ask the select board to do? I'm just keeping in mind our mandate is to provide advice to the select board. But you are recommending that it be done. So um, I think that, I think both would be valid. Okay. Sorry, Deborah, you had something to say. Yeah, you know, just in general. I mean, uh, being a retailer, I know how retailers in town are doing and I know how the Emerson Hospital is doing because I've talked to Christine, but Jerry represents nonprofit. There's some other people who represent businesses that aren't retail. How is everybody doing? I mean, how is, how are you managing Jerry? Is your organization going to come out of this okay? So um, our fiscal year ends next week and uh, through uh, the PPP or the PPE, yeah, the PPP, I've lost the acronyms already, um, and generous donors, we'll, we'll make it through the fiscal year and regroup. We've pivoted on a dime to turn most all of our programming into virtual. So we have virtual classes advertised online now. Uh, we have a virtual summer camp advertised online now. Um, our, our performing arts program, we're going to augment with a lot of virtual programming. So, you know, we're going to muddle through, and, you know, most of what we'll have to do is cover um, staff and employee costs, um, but we're not planning on closing anytime soon. So um, we feel between the the income that we can bring in from you know the the virtual classes and donations, we'll we'll keep going. Are people signing up for the virtual classes? They are. The summer camp has been enrolled for I think it'll be a week tomorrow, um, and that seems to be popular. Um, it'll be eight weeks long, so. Um, we're well on our way to covering the cost of that. Um, and the first round of classes, the spring classes online, I think we had maybe 60 or 70 students. I might be off by 10 or so there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I would say we're muddling through when we're trying to provide what we can to our kind of uh, staunch constituents. Um, we don't want to come out of this with having everybody looking at other places to, to get their art enrichment. So um, we're trying wow. to provide anything we can to keep them engaged. And we're also trying to partner with other nonprofits in town just to acknowledge we're all in this together and we can help each other out. And I think, um, you know, we've, we've got some good relationships through the Cultural District Committee and um, I think. And we'll Cato here. and Mark and your businesses are not, you know, retail. How are you guys doing? Um, we are doing fine. I think <clears throat> from an insurance standpoint, you know, we're still chugging along. Um, we've actually been uh, fortunate to actually hire um, two people during this process. Um, we, you know, we've, we've added some additional sales staff, which has um, made it so that we've needed to add support people. Um, so we're sort of in a little bit of a different boat. I think insurance is also, um, <clears throat> people need insurance people are looking at their insurance so we're actually 
especially picking up additional business. But I will say that, um, you know, talking to clients and talking to people, you know, there's a lot of discussion about um, reducing their gross sales figures, which affects their premiums. There's talk about reducing their um, payroll, which affects their workers' comp. Um, I think one thing that we're going to get caught up here, and, and it's interesting, the you, know, you probably all know the insurance companies all basically said hold off on, you know, non-pay cancellations and, and everything else, but we're still going to look for our money. Um, so in the last, you know, couple weeks, the insurance companies have actually come and started to say, okay, now we're going to look for, you know, the last few months of, of premium. Um, and I saw a list of clients with one of our carriers that was just kind of scary. Um, you know, when you look at what some people have, you know, avoided paying for the last three months in terms of their premiums and how that's going to affect them. And um, it's going to be an interesting few weeks and few months to watch sort of how that all plays out. So that's just sort of my take. But um, I've got a role. So it was good to see you guys. Thank you. See you Thank next time. So much, Kato. Okay. Thank you. Um, anybody else want to share how they're how they're doing through all this? So I think that you know we sort of um, you know we have property in southern New Hampshire and some towns around Concord and in Concord. Um, it's a mixed bag. Some you know some retail businesses are doing just fine. Uh, ones that were weak, you know, six months ago are struggling. Uh, a couple will not come back. They will shut down. Um, I think Concord has one of the more challenging retail environments. Um, I think costs are high. I think foot traffic is relatively low. Uh, I think traffic is an issue. Um, so I think that the more we can think about and support retail businesses and think about ways to you know, not only sustain them, but grow them, you know, is an important part of, you know, what I'm trying to do on the committee and, and, and it's, I think, important to all of us. So I think it's a focus that needs to be, you know, maintained and increased over time, to be honest with you, because there are businesses who are not, you know, who, are, who need help. Um, one idea that someone talk to me about that I did want to share with the committee. So we're in an interesting scenario in that the town actually owns our light plants and our internet. Um, and one uh, restaurateur was saying to me that she's really frustrated because, you know, she like so many of the restaurants that were just completely shut down for months. Um, you know, she's looking everywhere she can for what bills she could cut. And one of the first things that she did cut was her internet. Uh, I don't, I think it was the town internet. Um, and so she's using like a really old dial up system of some kind, but now that she can open and she's trying her best to use no contact products, for example, QR codes that you could scan with your phone to read a menu or e-pay options like Apple Pay or other electronic payment options, she's hitting this barrier of the slow internet that she has isn't allowing those technologies to work. So it's actively getting in the way of complying with optimizing the slow of the, of the spread of the virus. And she was saying if there was some way that the town could either waive internet fees or cut them in half or do something that that is you know something as simple as ninety dollars a month for the next few months could make a real difference for her so that was another thing i wanted to talk about with this committee is do we think it makes sense to ask for some sort of a utility abatement for businesses say from now through the fall or something Does anyone have a thought? I mean, I think we've gotten hit by summer. And so I think even though the eating establishments are finally opening and they're not opening at full capacity, um, 
their customers are are going away to the Cape or to Maine. So it, I mean, it, ninety dollars a month doesn't seem like a lot, but to some businesses, I I agree, it could be the difference between survival or not. I'd be in favor of asking the town whether that's, it's, if nothing else, it's a morale booster and a goodwill gesture. And I don't know whether the town can afford to do that, but if they can, I think it would be helpful. I know Stephen did respond in saying he, he was gonna investigate it and broadband is a category that's covered under CARES funding. So I don't know if that, that might help too. I think it's worth asking. Well, how about this? Can we, do you think it makes sense for us as a committee to maybe vote on requesting the two things we've discussed? So this is just asking the select board to consider a waiving signage restrictions um, to temporarily to allow the businesses to do what they need to do around signage and then B, requesting them to look into utility abatement for town owned utilities. Jennifer, they might also um, offer some incentive to move to the town broadband. Oh, that's a good point. Which would benefit the town in the long run because they'd have additional customers, paying customers eventually. And right. Jennifer, you don't, you don't speak about your own business and I know that your business is having a hard time too. So I'd like to hear a few words from you about how you're surviving or trying to survive. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Deborah. So my business is uh, Discover Concord Magazine. Uh, we are, well, we started, we, we're supposed to be celebrating our one year anniversary uh, with this summer issue. So we are a baby of a business. Um, we, obviously are very dependent upon our retail and restaurant tour community because they are predominantly our advertising support. Um, the way we've responded to the crisis is two things. Uh, we've decided that you know, normally distribution happens through the shops and restaurants in town. And obviously a lot of them are either not open or not open at full capacity. Um, and yet ironically, we feel very strongly that we can play a positive role in showing people that Concord is open, that the shops are open, that they need to come out and support everyone. And so we made the decision to go ahead and direct mail the summer issue to every household in Concord, which is not a small investment. Um, we have been incredibly blessed to have several companies that are at least hanging in there um, help us out a little bit with that effort. Um, so it, it's a difficult issue, uh, but we will, we'll be okay. Um, and we all, we did put together some programs to help the really small businesses that might most need the advertising, but not have the budget, um, to be able to participate. And we rolled that out last week and we've had five or six, um, kind of jump in where they wouldn't have been able to before. Um, unlike our other issues, uh, we will still have articles about our history and our literary legacy in the parks and all that, um, but we're treating this issue as almost a time capsule because we feel that we are living in a historic moment that we'll look back on decades from now and it'll be something none of us will forget. Um, so we want to document that and have that be something, you know, in a positive light. We're showing there's incredible innovation that's happening all around the town. People are coming together as a community in a way that, you know, we haven't seen necessarily before. Um, so we're, we're trying to ride that balance between showing the reality of where we are and putting an upbeat and forward looking, you know, frame around that. So um, we're hanging in there and there are people on this call who have been extraordinarily supportive in helping us get through. Um, but 
we'll, we're we're intent on still being there come fall. So well, I might be down a kidney, but we'll get there. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so thanks for asking, Deborah. I appreciate that. So all right, listen, guys. We're I see Jerry has to go. Thank you, Jerry. Um, I do want to um, maybe just capture our thoughts here so that we have some action items out of this call, if we could. Um, would we like to go ahead and put together a motion to recommend to the select board that we A, waive relevant guidelines through the end of 2020 to um, waive historic district and signage bylaw requirements to help the businesses? And B, do we want to ask the um, select board to look into a utility abatement for businesses? Jennifer, on the first one, uh, as long as they don't block the roadway, the walkways, I mean, there are, I, there are a lot of things that there, people put a lot of stuff out on the sidewalks right now in certain areas. And it's kind of junky, I have to admit. It, it looks like, in some places, it almost looks like it's a, um, uh, you know, a fair, and right? uh, what do I say? The, <clears throat> so I, I think that we need to. I don't think we want it to look like a junkyard because I have to admit there's certain areas that look like there's a lot of stuff outside. That kind of takes away from the character and from people's ability to walk the streets and to enjoy Concord. So it, it, it can't be a free for all, but I agree there needs to be an ability to, for people to advertise their wares, but it can't just be a, a, a uh, <coughs> excuse me. Well, there's ADA the guidelines. Really tiny in a lot of places, and it's yeah, it would still, it would, you still have to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Correct. So you cannot block the sidewalk. Um, we're talking about signage um, to allow people to, you know, and and honestly, if for a couple of months there's a few more signs out there than we'd like to see, but businesses survive. I'm all for it. I mean, signage I don't have a problem with. It's it's the stuff that people are putting out on the streets that just creates a barrier for walking, and that um, and then I'm not talking about the stuff right against the storefront. There's just people who are really expanding into the walkways. Yeah, and that, um, that that impacts the other businesses in that local area because they have to go out on the street. And if they don't go out on the street, right. they aren't necessarily going to continue shopping. So. Yes. This motion is only addressing signage. Just just addressing signage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have seen like the flags work really well. Some people have done chalk and, and anything they can do to draw attention, you know, is great. I, yeah. I I would make a motion to support that, that we recommend that to the Slack board. Okay. Um Deborah? You're seconding the motion? I'm seconding the motion. Okay. Can, uh, let's do a, a roll call vote on this one. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with Deborah. Uh, how do you vote? Aye. Okay. I vote aye. Dawn? Aye. Jane? Aye. Okay. Uh, Beth? Aye. Okay. Mark? Aye. Okay. And Marsha? I don't believe I'm an official member. You're not voting. Okay. Right. I'm a not voting. All right. Member. Okay, then that's unanimous, right? Okay, great. I'm glad I'm glad we have a an action item out of this. Our um I have a question. A yes, follow up question. Um I think at some point in time, and I'm not sure if it's you know, a month, three months, um, I think you're gonna have a number of commercial landowners who own primarily retail filled establishments file for abatements or plan to file for abatements. I don't think they can technically file until the end of the year, but, um, and, you know, I can tell you sort of firsthand that, you know, there are a lot of businesses owners who I've spoken to are really having, you know, serious discussions as to payment of rent, deferrals, reductions, possibly closing. So I'm just wondering, you know, it may not be a critical conversation or push from this committee to the selectmen yet. However, I think it needs to be on our agenda in some form. Um, because I, I don't think the problem is going to go away unless miraculously 
things turn around. You know, I think that, you know, if you have a restaurant, if you have, you know, um, a dry cleaner that's been closed for three months, I think it's going to come up. Now, as a percentage of taxes, it's a very small percentage. But I think for certain landowners, it's a significant issue that, you know, we should probably address whether we do something, don't do anything, you know, at some point in time, maybe, you know, a meeting or two in the future. That's a great idea, Mark. Let's let's put that on our agenda even for the next meeting to start thinking about. It'd be good to get out ahead of that. Great. I also think that over the long term, we need to address Mark's earlier comment from maybe 15 minutes ago. We talked about the long-term viability of retail and Concord. I think that there are a number of issues right now because of the pandemic that are um, certainly have risen the, the raised the whole profile of, of their costs and their, and their benefits. But over the long term, that survival needs to be looked at, I think, in a more comprehensive fashion. Uh, and I don't know, that's probably not until the January timeframe, because I think you're absolutely right, over the next couple of months are pretty critical uh, for people getting over the hump. Mm -hmm. uh, but over the long term, those costs of, of foot traffic and uh, just coming to Concord will be will be something that needs to be addressed. Agreed. Are there any, so, uh, yes, Don. I was just gonna say back to your earlier question about the um, broadband, I'd like to put forth a motion to ask the select board to uh, talk with the town about waiving broadband fees for a certain number of months and perhaps um, making an incentive waiving whatever, I don't know what the installation charges are, but that's certainly, again, I think if we um, show that there would be a long-term benefit to the town because once the broadband is in these businesses that don't have it now, they would have a paying customer in the future. Okay, well, we have a motion from Don. Do we have a second? Sure, sure. Don. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Deborah. <laughs> okay, uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, all against? So, Jane, I'm sorry, you're voting against? No, no, no. Ah, no. Okay. Then it's I'm unanimous. putting my hand on my computer to get it off of mute. That's okay. All right, so then that's great. We have two recommendations coming out of this meeting. That's wonderful. Thank you. The point that Dawn made about the broadband installation, I think, is pretty critical for long term success. Uh, so, I, I, they may not be able to do anything else, but in the long term planning, of uh, economic vitality of the retailers in, in Concord or in business and businesses in, in general, I think that's pretty critical. If you don't have it, it becomes very difficult to run your business in today's day and age. Yeah, knowing what you're yep. Okay, are there any other items of committee business? Uh, if not, I, I do see a member of the public I want to get to. So go ahead, Beth. Beth, you had. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, also for future, yeah, um, for future, should we also think about what happens to those vacant storefronts and put that on our, our sort of long range plan? Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, I do see that we, um, we do have Linda Escobedo with us. Linda, is there anything that you wanted to ask or share with us uh, before we adjourn this meeting? No, I guess not. Hi everyone, yeah, sorry. Okay. It, it took, took me a little while. Um, obviously these two recommendations coming out of this meeting, um, we'll get to Stephen right away. Mm -hmm because um, it may be that he has to work with the light plan on this um, more directly than the Board of Selectmen being involved in that um, latter issue. But I think those are two good starting points. Great. Thank you. Is there anything else from the committee this meeting? Then in that case, can I have a, mo a motion to adjourn? Mark? Do I have a second? Don, okay. All in favor of adjourning? Okay. Nobody's opposed. 
have a lovely evening. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you all for your time. Good job, Jennifer. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Care, everyone. Pleasure. Bye. -bye.